Thumbs up from everyone. Yay. Okay, cool. Let me make sure my phone's on silent because that's rude. And let me take my mask off. Hold on. So that way I can freely drink my water. I'm excited. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of turning around because sometimes I forget the order of my own presentation. Let me just do this. Yeah, this is better. OK, everyone. So welcome to my panel. Um, it's my first of, geez, three that I'm doing this weekend. Um, I'm really excited to talk about this because this is honestly one of my favorite styles. Um, and it's one that I feel like a lot of people only really know in like relation to Lolita. So I'm just really excited to give you guys like a little history and a how to and just kind of gush about this stuff with y'all. Um, so yeah, uh, it's an intro to natural K, which I will go into it is a misnomer, but that's for. So here's what to generally expect. Um, there isn't really a structured community with natural K. It's very much like a, um, kind of just a lifestyle brand. Uh, they, especially in their heyday in like the 80s, they used to like make everything, like kitchenware, towels, baby clothes, thermoses. They still make a lot of those things, um, but they're not quite as much of a lifestyle brand as they were because they were big in the 80s. Um, so for that reason, there wasn't really like a pink house community um, because for the most part, it was just like, this is a brand I like and I'm going to buy it. It's like, and it's also pre-internet days too. So it wasn't like there was a designated area in like Japan where people would hang out. There wasn't really anything like that. Um, and unlike Lolita and some other alternative fashion styles, it wasn't like kind of built around um, a music style or a genre of like, like, or like very specific hobbies. Like essentially people who are interested in Pink House could like, or interested in Pink House could do anything. Um, so yeah, uh, that's like pretty interesting. Also, I do want to point out that a lot of pink house fashion has been spearheaded by one designer. So you're going to hear me talk about his designs and like all of his like random subsidiary brands and just the people that were inspired by him. So for that reason, you're not going to get too much of like the off-brand perspective. I absolutely do have like a couple of slides on it with like a lot of options, but um, because I do want to talk about the history of the brand and how it came to be, you're going to see like a lot of focus on like just kind of like one subset of brands and like kind of led by one person. So yeah, um, I also really wanted to talk about the price point because that's a really big deal. This is an extremely expensive style that can put Lolita to shame. So, but the, Upside is, is um, the used market is not nearly as stable as the Lolita used market. Um, for the most part, you can find like things from Pink House that are under $100. Um, even though brand new, they would have been upwards of $800. Um, so things don't really retain value very well. Um, and on top of that, like unlike Lolita, where there's like clear trends and you can be like, that's a dress from like, 2005, this is a dress from 2010, you really can't do that with Pink House. It's kind of unchanging and it, that was actually purposeful. The designer didn't want to be influenced by outside trends. And that's actually like a big reason why he was kind of the only person doing a lot of the main designing because he was just like, I don't want to bring new people in who are like, oh, have you heard about this new, this new fad? Let's incorporate it into our brand. Like he just really wanted to avoid that. He wanted to create something timeless and he wanted heirloom quality materials. So like almost everything I'm wearing is probably older than me and I'm 30. So like this stuff lasts and it still looks really, really great years later. Um, so yeah, like, Basically, this kind of gives you a breakdown of like, you know, the benefits of new versus old. Every once in a while, they do something that introduces like a brand new motif, and those can be really hard to find secondhand. Um, for example, a few years back, they released this amazing like gradient dress that had stars all along the bottom. And once it sold out, I have not seen a single piece from that collection for sale. It'll probably pop up in another 30 years because 
that seems to be the trend with some pink house. Um, so if there is a motif you're like really, really into that's like unique by pink house standards, um, might wanna jump on it brand new. But other than that, you don't need to buy pink house brand new. In fact, I kind of discourage it. It's honestly a lot more fun trying to find things secondhand. Um, and I kind of talked about this briefly with trends. Uh, pink house doesn't really follow them. The closest they ever get is when they do collaborations with like pop stars or like specific models. And um, this is Memoiro Clover Z, I believe. And um, they made like these really cute the Letterman jackets for each of them and sold that collaboration. But for the most part, the silhouette is exactly the same as um, what you're kind of used to. Um, they still use like general floral patterns. They didn't really kind of go out of like what they're known for. So here's a little bit of history. I'm kind of gonna run through it because everything's like right there behind me and I hate reading off slides and I'm sure you hate hearing me read off slides. So um, the main things I'm gonna focus on is the fact that it was founded in the 60s, but it was reformed in the 80s. And that's why you hear a lot of people say like, Lolita came from Pink House in the 80s. Like that tends to be like a sentence that people always talk about when they talk about the origins of Lolita fashion. Um, but it technically started in the 60s. Um, and um, the photo on the side is actually their very first storefront. Um, so yeah, that photo is from like 1960 something. Um, they became popular in the 1980s and early 1990s, um, just in general during like the massive like bubble economy in Japan. Everyone was like really looking for extremely luxurious brands and their price point just like really hit it. Like um, it's, Still to this day, it is like easily at least $2,000 to wear like a brand new head to toe pink house outfit. Um, they were heavily promoted in Olive magazine, which is also considered one of the first magazines that really talk about what would eventually become the Lolita silhouette, um, which generally had this really fun, quirky style that included lots of like fun knit sweaters and just kitschy prints and patterns. Um, and they kind of fell out of favor. Um, I remember I got into the style like 10 years ago and um, someone recognized uh, what I was wearing. They were like, oh, you know, that's kind of like the stuff like my mother or like my grandmother would wear because that was kind of it. Like it, a lot of graduating Lolitas um, would kind of go to pink house afterwards. Like that was like a fairly common like kind of life cycle for the Japanese Lolita. Um, so a lot of people would just kind of saw it as a style that you would wear once you had children almost. Um, so like a lot of people were confused why someone as young as me was wearing the style back then. But there's actually a huge resurgence going on right now. Um, and they have like a sub brand called Pink House Chelsea that is a little bit on the trendier side. Um, I know I talked about that designer saying he didn't want to be influenced by trends. He no longer um, works under the Pink House umbrella. So I honestly feel like that's a big reason why Pink House Chelsea is there. They make like really cute like retro pinup um, inspired stuff. So I highly recommend looking them up. Um, they have an Instagram account that's like great influence. Um, and then they've started doing um, collabs with like Misako Aoki and Arinko, and for that reason they were starting to really capture the Lolita demographic. So this is Kaneko Isao. He is the like founder of Pink House and kind of like the main designer for all of his styles. Um, he, he founded so many sub brands that like don't exist anymore. Um, after he left Pink House, he started Wonderful World and then his eponymous label also called Kaneko Isao. They're all shuttered. The only one that's really existing right now are those first three bullets. So you've got Pink House, Ingeborg, and Carl Helmet. Um, baby Pink House was what it sounds like. It made baby clothes. That's also gone, but you can still find a lot of Baby Pink House secondhand. So if, like me, you want to dress up your usakumias, um, I buy Baby Pink House stuff for them. So <laughs> you could definitely do fun stuff with it. A lot, I've also been seeing a lot of like really fun stuff. Um, and I have some pictures later on of people turning like Baby Pink House items into like masks and stuff. Like the DIY culture is like very like big in Pink House. It's very normal to like purchase clothes that have clearly been altered or mended. Um, it, it's not nearly like, like obviously like there's some things that are coveted in the style because you know, like I said, you can find certain things after they sell out from the store. But for the most part, you can tell that like everyone who like engages in this fashion and wears it, like intends to be wearing it forever. 
Um, so that's like really kind of nice to see. So when Pink House was really big in the 80s, here's a bunch of like defunct um, brands, some still existing, some that completely changed their style, um, that were clearly inspired by Pink House and made a lot of Pink House friendly things. Um, and some of these brands persisted into the 90s. That's why Meta is there. Um, a lot of like those really long length Meta skirts that you find from like 99 to 2000 was them like playing the Pink House. Um, Ketty, uh, I put an asterisk next to it because their style nowadays is like very like, gosh, I'm trying to think, like Banana Republic, honestly. It's like not, <laughs> it, it looks very normy, but Ketty in the 80s was like clearly just, I, I say this with love because I actually really love Ketty. They were just ripping off Pink House. Like everything they made was just a Pink House rip off. Um, and I highly recommend them for secondhand because their stuff just doesn't, their stuff like retains even less value than Pink House does. Um, Ideal is uh, the one in all kanji. Um, it's also sometimes translated to rural poem. They um, had two sub-brands, Street, Street Organ and Garland. Um, and you can find all of these secondhand still. And they kind of focused more on like earth tones and like less on the kitschy side. I'm gonna have a lot more photos, I promise. This is just like the info dump. <laughs> so um, yeah, like the, and Nougat, Sugar, Atsuki, Onishi, um, they're, primarily knitwear. Um, and the interesting thing with Atsuki Onishi and why I included it was that was actually where Baby's um, founder um, first got his start in fashion. He started working for Atsuki Onishi and then eventually left and founded Baby in like the late 80s. So, you know, th this is why like you kind of hear Pink House kind of discussed when talking about the history of Lolita. Like you see a lot of this like influence and um, a lot of clear homages to the style over time. And I'm really excited because it's clearly coming back. I think the 20 year, what? It's probably the 40, 40 years now. So yeah, yeah, the 20 year cycle is like, it's coming for us. Um, <laughs> Catherine Cottage is actually a children's brand, um, but they're great for shoes if your feet are small enough. <laughs> and uh, Mary Jenny is um, honestly kind of, I would argue is a bit of a fast fashion brand, but um, a lot of their stuff is like very easy to work into a pink house outfit and like, incredibly affordable, you can, um, and I feel like they're slightly more size inclusive. And that's another thing I'm gonna get into later. Um, and then there's favorite one. Their quality isn't nearly as nice, but they do a lot of like fun anime collabs. So if you're ever like, hmm, I wanna dress like an anime character I really like, but like Pink House, favorite one probably did a collab at some point. So yeah, here's Lolita Fashion and Pink House. Like, so these, are all photos I literally got off of their respective websites like today. So we've got Meta first, then um, Baby, then um, Angelic Pretty. And it's abundantly clear that like a lot of um, brands are kind of trying to like scoop up this like pink house demographic because they're starting to realize that there's overlap there. And there's also just the fact that um, like, I mean, this is, this is great. There's just a general revival. Um, they just want to focus on more longer length cuts and give those options to people. So yeah, like there's always been like a pretty clear line between the two styles, but I would argue that Pink House has almost none of the rigidity or like formality that Lolita can have. So here's some other stores that are really great. Um, we've got um, a couple Taobao stores first. Um, Surface Spell and Sweet Dreamer both have a lot of really great stuff that can work well with Pink House. They make a lot of like calf length or longer dresses with lots of like um, pico frills. Um, and pico frills loosely translate to like these really tiny little frills that just kind of edge things. So if you find things that have like the pico frill kind of motif, um, that probably would work really, really well with Pink House. Um, Faye Cafe is another Taobao brand that honestly is also just straight up ripping off um, Pink House. Um, um, but I wouldn't, they're not making replicas. Like that's for certain. I've actually never really seen like a Pink House replica per se. I've just seen things that are like clearly inspired by them. Um, and Faye Cafe actually straight up puts like Kaneko as in like the first name of the designer. Or the, yes, the last name of the designer um, in uh, in like their listings. So they are absolutely aware that they're trying to capture that demographic. Um, Le Flacon is um, another um, Chabao brand. They also have an English web store 
I think the markup's a little bit higher, but it might be worth it if you don't feel like navigating Taobao. They have a lot of things that work really well. Um, and they have some deluxe items that are honestly priced closer to Pink House that are gorgeous, um, that are, you know, like that ankle length silhouette that are that absolutely fit into a Pink House wardrobe. Um, there's Nuit de Cellophane, um, Dark Star Island, and Brag and Bones, which is an Etsy store that also does a lot, like primarily plus size inclusive um, stuff. And highly recommend Rag and Bones. Their stuff is just so cool. Um, I also would recommend them for people who are just into a general Mori aesthetic too, not just Pink House. Um, and secondhand options for Pink House are very similar to Lolita. You've got Closet Child, Wonderwelt, Yahoo Japan, Mercari Frill. And the weirdest thing is Club Candy. Um, I think it's clubcandy.jp and they're a very weird um, store because the way they work is they have an invisible bidding system um, and basic, so it's like basically impossible for a shopping service to deal with because that shopping service has to be like logged in um, and ready to like place their bid. And on the back end, there's someone checking to see who had the highest bid and then it gets added to your cart after a couple hours where you can then pay for it. It's a very weird system, but the things that don't sell through their like silent auction system are just available to purchase. So sometimes you're lucky if you, you know, show up after they do one of their big drops and there's like some honestly scraps that you can like collect. Usually all the good stuff's gone, but they're worth looking at if only to just kind of see a lot of pink house clothing in one place because they have a lot of like um, weird collections. And uh, like at one point they had one of the Kaneko Isao wedding dresses, which is just absolutely stunning. Um, and you will never see that again. So it's just really cool to just browse Club Candy. Um, but honestly, Closet Child's a better deal. Wonder Walt has had the same like 10 items and they're overpriced. So, um, and then Etsy is, um, or any sort of like secondhand store is really great if you just look for things that were in the Prairie Revival, um, like fashion style in the 70s. Um, so like gunny sacks, um, novelty cardigans from like heirloom collectibles, those would all fit in really well into the pink house fashion. So like, these are some really good tips to make off-brand work for Natural K. Um, generally, like there isn't as much, and I'll have more photos. Um, there aren't as many like uh, they're strict like silhouette requirements. Um, so what really makes it kind of work is like being aware of what like prints and materials you're using. So natural materials like cotton and wool tend to be more popular. Um, you want like floral and like cutesy motifs that are kitschy, but like not like a Lolita print in the sense that they like almost tell a story. They're just kind of supposed to be like this little like throwaway all over print um, that doesn't have like a really like strict theme. Like like I'm, I'm trying to think um, like the AP uh, Wish Me Mel like collab, um, it's like very specifically is like showing like a tea party with like little bunnies and um, like different Sanrio characters and like that doesn't really fit very well into the pink house fashion, but like a generic floral print or like a strawberry print works really well. Um, in general, you wanna avoid chiffon, batik designs and tie dye prints. Um, lately, I'm starting to see a, li a little bit more tool in um, pink house, which is like kind of um, new for them, but it's almost always like an overdress or like an accent. It's never the main piece. Um, and usually if you are wearing something synthetic as a main piece, it just starts to look more like you're wearing like a long Lolita outfit and like less like a pink house outfit. And like I said, prioritize longer length items. Although I will say pink house makes a lot of like Lolita length items too. It's just easier for off brand purposes to like give off that look if it's like almost to your ankles or longer. Um, and yeah, I mentioned this in the last slide, but vintage Prairie Revival brands, um, Gunny Sacks, Laura Ashley, great to like look into. Um, even just finding um, old patterns and seeing if you can make something um, from them, like 70s patterns can really, really help for pink house style. So yeah, here we go. Now I've got pictures. I'm done doing my info dump. Um, so you've got the anatomy of a coordinate. I wanted to show y'all like a casual outfit, like the one on the left versus like a more like dressed up outfit. 
casual outfit. It's like a zipper hoodie vest sort of thing over like a patterned shirt and a very plain canvas skirt. Um, but this is still very pink house. There's like kitschy prints happening. The purse is like covered in teddy bears. Teddy bears are a big thing in pink house because Kaneko Isao really loved teddy bears. And like his whole thing was he, his dream was to do a teddy bear collab. So <laughs> he actually managed to do one. And that specific teddy bear collab was actually very popular among Lolitas. And that's why in old school street snaps, you see a lot of like little teddy bears. It's them like channeling how cute they found the pink house teddy bear. So. Fun fact. Um, so like, yeah, the first outfit is like very toned down and it's with like a really cute sneaker actually. Um, and those sneakers are Mary Jenny. Um, so highly recommend their shoes, they're so comfortable. The more like layered and kind of dressed up outfit is kind of considered more over the top by Pink House standards. Um, you see like a stole that's been tied in a bow around her neck. Um, she's actually got like a really interesting like, um, I think it's a scarf that's been folded in half and tied around her waist, causing like creating that like asymmetric line. Um, and she's wearing two skirts at least, um, with one um, unbuttoned to reveal the skirt underneath. Um, like the more layered it looks, the more over the top for Pink House. Rather than um, your accessory choice, the accessories don't really change too, too much. It's just the layering aspect that does. Um, the wear, wear JP is like Japanese lookbook essentially, and it's a really good place to just kind of um, get the hang of just a lot of styles that you don't see documented by um, places like Tokyo Fashion or Harajuku Fashion Walk that tend to like go after the people that are looking like extremely avant-garde um, because Pink House, again, doesn't really have a centralized community and is kind of considered more of like a lifestyle brand that you just kind of wear on your like down day sort of, um, you just, it's very hard to find street snaps, but if you go to Wear JP, where it's users uploading their own images of their outfits, you can find a lot. So I highly recommend checking the tag for Pink House and just scrolling. There's incredible stuff. In fact, I think the image on the left I got off of Wear JP, um, and the right was a, a runway show at um, I, I'm not sure which store, but it was a runway runway store a runway show at a luxury store. So yeah. Um, and let's see, what else? Oh yeah, the flowing shapeless silhouette is important. Um, it's very common to just see most things have like a kind of straight rectangular bodice rather than something very fitted and um, curvaceous. Like you don't, you're not really going for that. So, um, and Lolita very much has like this look of like, I'm putting a petticoat under here to give this volume. Pink House's volume comes from the layering. So even though you can absolutely get like a very nice like long petticoat to just sort of slip underneath. Um, it's not really something for uh, like, you generally want that volume to come from like the more layers you're wearing. So yeah, building a wardrobe. This is honestly super easy to do because like you just need a couple statement pieces. And um, like I always recommend like getting a couple things that are ankle length, um, at least one thing that can be completely buttoned down, buttoned down the front because that layering aspect is so important for pink house. Um, one or two blouses, like one blouse with like a more fun collar, another that's like pretty plain and simple. Um, pink house also is like perfectly fine with like incorporating like t-shirts into the style too. So if you find like a t-shirt that you think has a really cute print or like a cute trim on it, that's also good to go. Um, and what I really like about Pink House is um, the fact that a 90 by 90 centimeter square of fabric is like the perfect accessory for Pink House. You can tie it around your waist, fold it in half. You can um, wear it like a stole over your shoulders. Um, you can like tie it up into a knot and like put it in your hair. There's just so much you can do with a stole. And it literally just requires like a quick run to the fabric store and a straight stitch. And you've got yourself like a great accessory. And if you know you want to double duty it, it's also a great kinchaku so you can like fold your lunch in it. Um, so yeah. Uh, the other fun thing about Pink House is bomber jackets are also like perfectly valid um, and cardigans are as well. I showed that Memoiro Clover Z image earlier that had like the silk um, leather, like or the silk uh, souvenir style jacket, Sukajan kind of thing. Um, that's also totally valid. Um, and 
Uh, floral corsage pins are really like solid staple in different sizes. Um, there's some that have like bows attached to them that are really, really cute. Um, pink house corsages go for a lot of money. Um, I think it's better to just make your own or like find an off brand or even just find some floral brooches that are already in your wardrobe and just incorporate it into your outfit. Um, I think that's super, super easy to do. And um, honestly, a fun statement bag. Uh, Misakumia was probably not really invented by baby. Like Pink House was like making like fun rabbit bags for like years and years. So um, they also have like a lot of like great like giant bear bags. Um, shoes and accessories, also super easy. Um, you just want to like wear whatever's comfortable. Um, Pink House has actually done a or is currently doing a collaboration with Converse, and it's literally just Converses that are printed with like one of their newer prints with like little strawberries, and it's very adorable. And like that's also totally okay to wear with um, Pink House. Um, I see sneakers all the time. Um, cute ankle boots, engineer boots, um, Tokyo boppers are really popular right now. Um, and jewelry is usually small and understated. Usually when I'm wearing pink house, I completely forget to wear jewelry because there's just so many other aspects. Um, and it's just generally more common to use fabric brooches and floral corsages. Hair and makeup, um, again, you there isn't really like a pink house style of hair and makeup. Like for the most part, you can wear what, like you can currently wear it with how your current hairstyle is. But in a lot of their photo shoots, they tend to have a lot of like curly permed hair that's kind of like piled up in like this like full beehive. But again, that's like really only for photo shoots. Um, I'm gonna show you some street, street fashion photos and some street snaps where like it's very clear that the person is just wearing their regular hairstyle um, with the fashion. Um, but hair accessories, you know, you want to think about like that fun, like 70s prairie revival sort of vibe. So like straw hats and like, again, more like floral headpieces. I also just like taking like really thin um, rectangle headdresses from my Lolita wardrobe and wear it with um, Pink House. I'm wearing a giant bonnet right now, but honestly, you don't really see bonnets <laughs> in Pink House. I just wore it because this is a Lolita event. So I was like, oh, let me let me wear this. It's it's jelly pretty. So this is like not pink house. But um uh, you you really don't see bonnets. Uh they're the biggest like statement headpiece you'll find is like an extremely large straw hat. Um and uh they also do a lot of like great wide brimmed bucket hats <laughs> that have like pico frills all underneath. And they're they're just wild. So that's like the most that they go for. And usually the hats are also made out of the same fabric as the clothes. So they'll have like really fun kitschy prints on them. Um, but yeah, it can be whatever you want it to be, honestly. Like these are just some examples, but you don't need to like go out and get your hair permed because you want to like make sure that you fit the aesthetic. Like it's not, it's not like that. So here's some modern day examples. It took me way too long to get to this. I'm sorry. I should have put this earlier, but, um, Here's like three like really good examples of um, how Pink House style is worn currently. As you can see, like everyone is like more or less wearing their natural hair. Um, and I really like how they're kind of going in like levels of like intensity, I guess. So like on the far left, you've got this really lovely um, uh, outfit that's honestly, that's just a sweatshirt with a really fun collar layered over it. So it's, literally, it's just like a little like fleece lined sweater. Um, and there's a pink house jumper, a really cute little bear bag, and some cute flats um, that look like they have like little berries and lace on it. So that is absolutely a pink house outfit. Um, and as you can see, the person is like wearing like a short haircut. So totally valid. In the center is someone who's like done a really good job of incorporating a lot of current day trends with a pink house wardrobe. So those Mary Jenny shoes, um, again, holding a little teddy bear. Um, the hairstyle is like this pastel lantern braid hairstyle that's really in right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, these really cute little lacy gloves. And again, to kind of make it look a little bit more over the top, she's unbuttoned the JSK and put a skirt that you can see peeking out from underneath it. Um, and then on the far right, unfortunately, I couldn't find photos of just the person on the far right on their own, but they're the ones I'm primarily talking about here. Um, she's wearing like a at least 
three skirts. I can see three skirts happening. Um, she's wearing three blouses <laughs> and these really fun, like little ankle length boots. And it looks like a really cute bag with like a heart cut out. Um, and again, her hairstyle is like not overly styled. It's just something that she's kind of put her hair up in for the day. So these are like really, really good examples of what Pink House looks like running around. It's not supposed to be like a really big statement style. It is kind of just supposed to be, you know, something cute that you're wearing day to day. So um, feel free to take photos of the slide. Um, I'm also, you can also just, you know, ask me to email you the presentation, I can as well. But here's like some direct links to some good stores to check out um, and because of the way um, Mercari and Frill work, um, you can actually sort by brand. So I've like directly linked the links to Pink House as a brand. But honestly, you can um, look up any of like the buzzwords I've been using, like Kaneko, Isao works, Wonderful World works. You'll find a lot of stuff. Um, and yeah, uh, those are the Japanese terms, Pink House, Kaneko, Isao. And um, oh, I completely forgot to talk about why Natural K isn't really its name. Um, natural K kind of denotes a different style entirely in Japan, um, but that this kind of picked up in the US to call it that. But a lot of, there isn't really like a agreed upon name for it in Japan though. Um, a lot of people call it Kaneko K after the designer. Um, others just call it Pinku House style. Um, there's not really like an agreed upon name for the style. Um, so on social media, like I feel like I've had pretty good luck just trying to look up Pink House and like in, in um, the katakana there, and then just sorting through act literal pink houses, um, unfortunately. <laughs> like, there isn't like a better tagging system for the style. Um, but yeah, like, I think a lot of people in the US call it natural K because um, again, calling it pink house in the US is rough because if people try to Google it, you literally only find like Google images of pink houses. Um, so it, it's not extremely helpful, but um, personally I'm kind of, uh, I kind of like Kaneko K because it like gives homage, like I like the, how it sounds together. And I also think it's nice to just kind of give an homage to the original designer. Um, and here's some general tips for handmade. Those are the masks I talked about a little bit earlier that someone like I think turned some of their baby clothes into. <laughs> um, it's a really cute way of like remaking um, what you've got in case you either can't fit into the item or the item is so damaged you can't repair it so you can at least like take the fabric out. Um, there's really no stigma against alterations in pink house style. Like I think in general it's actually kind of rare to find things that are being sold like willingly. Like a lot of times the people selling it are like oh like I love this item so much but it's time for it to go. Or um, a lot of the listings will straight up say like, my mom tasked me with selling her old clothes, so I'm just selling them for her. <laughs> like it's a lot of that. Um, but like you, these sorts of prints are like constantly recurring with Pink House. And on top of that too, um, because they're going through their revival right now and they're like generally very popular, they're actually re-releasing a lot of their old designs. Um, so yeah, there's just a lot of options for you. Um, I highly recommend just looking into all of these things. Making a simple elastic skirt is like elastic waist skirt is like really easy. Um, just make something ankle length and you can just layer it over under things as you feel the need. Um, uh, blouses, 70s and 80s patterns with like big, um, with big shoulders are really helpful. Um, and just baggy cardigans are really, really great. And um, they're pretty easy to find and alter, so. So yeah, that, that was kind of um, the panel that I hope that was like helpful. And I also brought a bunch of like pink house stuff so y'all can like kind of touch it. Cause um, I, I feel like when I tell people like all these like individual items of clothing brand new would have been like $800. They're like, nothing is worth $800. But, and then I'm just like, no, for real, it's totally worth it. And it absolutely is like a lot of the clothes I brought are again, like older than me. Um, a lot of the items have like these really, really tiny pin tucks that have hand crocheted lace onto each pin tuck. Um, and there's just so much like love and care put into their pieces. Like the high price point starts to make sense once you have a chance to like look at it. And for me, like the only reason I even got into the style was because my best friend and I just split like a $200 um, like a uh, lot of damaged pink house. And we just like, well, cleaned it and mended it and just like 
started wearing the style from then on out. So um, it's, it's definitely worth it. So like, feel free to just come up here and take a look at things. Um, and you can ask me questions as well. I can go back a couple of slides so we can just like look at this because I think this is just really helpful to like help you kind of see how the style is like implemented. Um, but yeah, like feel free to ask me questions and like, don't be shy. Like just come up here and touch my stuff. I really don't mind. So <laughs> yeah, uh, go for it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So um, one thing I really, really appreciate about Kanako Isao's like, kind of vision for his brand was that he didn't want to be influenced by trends. And for that reason, like I'm able to wear a mixture of things from like the 80s, the early 2000s, and like one brand, brand new item. And it looks like I got them all yesterday. Um, and I think that just speaks volumes for like the quality as well, that like the item from the 80s can still look so nice and new next to something that was like only made a few months prior. Um, so yeah, and like, and I think that's like the, the problem, like we have a lot with the sustainability argument is like, you know, a lot of sustainable clothing is incredibly expensive and like, this is absolutely like taking the cake on like expense. I mean, an, an entire brand new head to toe pink, pink house outfit is like four figures. Um, so it, it's a difficult discussion to have because it's like, uh, like, I'm told like these codes will absolutely last and they'll stand the test of time with like care and mending, but like you need to open up your wallet from the get go. And that's, that's rough. But that's why I also think the second hand market is so strong because like all of the codes are able to like last all this time and then make it onto the second hand market to be, you know, sold for so much cheaper because like, it's not like the Lolita market where there's like, Oh, this is like vintage. So it's like, rarer and more expensive there really isn't that with pink house because like it's just another nearly identical floral print so um yeah like I, I i think pink house really challenges you to be like really confident in what you like and like to not be swayed by outside forces and that's like just really cool <laughs> yeah no problem any other questions oh, oh, yeah yeah go for it Sure. So I um, would. Sorry to interrupt. Avina, would you mind repeating the question for our live stream listeners? Oh, yeah. So Thank the you. <laughs> Sorry about that. So the question was um, what was my first pink house item like compared to my newest? Um, and I would say that um, I wish I had the foresight to bring it. Um, my first pink house items were actually very like cut sew material. Um, so they were basically like made with t-shirt material and had like a cute statement apron like sewn into the shoulders and they were supposed to just be worn like that one piece with like no layering or like real thought being put into the styling you just slap on your socks your shoes and you're good to go um and those tend to be the cheapest items you can find secondhand um because they don't have as many of like the little frills and pin tucks and all those like little extra details so those were kind of like my first pink house items where a lot of these like really comfortable but still like cutesy um, items from them. Um, and I basically would wear them all the time when I didn't have the energy to wear Lolita. Um, and then nowadays, like, I actually think I might have my latest purchase hanging there. Um, <laughs> going back to the longevity, um, I have a, an Ingeborg dress that I've like worn to literal pieces. Um, the buttons started popping off. Um, I realized that there was a bit of a bleach accident on the bottom of one of them. And I was just like, oh, this is my favorite dress. Um, and so I'm going to hem that dress and like let it be like Lolita length almost because basically the whole bottom has like bleached with age. Um, and then I found the exact same dress in much better condition online like a month ago and I bought it again. And that's that lavender dress that's hanging there. Um, it's incredible and it's like totally worth a look. It's it's got these giant sleeves that are covered in pin tucks um, and I got it for 80 bucks. So, I mean, I, I'm sure it, I'm sure it sold for like 600 um, back in the day. Um, so now I'm just starting to like rebuy my staples. Um, if I know that one that I really liked, um, unfortunately, 
um, some like sort of accident happened where I couldn't restore it and I'd need to completely change the dress. Um, that's kind of what I've been focusing on now has been like trying to track down my favorite. So like when one eventually needs to be retired, I have like a second one to wear again. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's kind of how, how my style's changed. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Any, anything else? There's also a mic up at the front too, um, if it's easier. Go ahead. Yeah, okay, so the question was, did Pink House do a QP collab? Um, Pink House literally just loves QP and is just constantly making QP prints. I actually have a QP print like hanging right there because that's actually what got me into Pink House was I saw the QP prints and I was just like, what is this? I need like a million. And um, I just slowly started to collect QP prints as, as a result. Um, and I have God forsaken, I'm not a QP print pink house clothing now. In fact, I the majority of my pink house wardrobe is a QP wardrobe. But, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they, they did. It wasn't like an official collaboration. I think the 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 actual like QP mascot was just in the common domain um, and they just liked it and they started printing it on stuff. Um, I I like to interpret like a kind of feminist aspect to it. Like Rose O'Neill, the creator of QP was like the first female cartoonist. So like I'll like... I like to think that it's kind of like this like groundbreaking woman and like her creation being like put on a bunch of like clothes for like femmes who just want to like do stuff and wear what they like and be comfortable doing it. So um, I don't think it's that deep though. I think they just really thought it was like the silly thing to put on a print. They did it. <laughs> Anything else? No, we're good. Okay, I'm gonna put up my info again. Um, thank you so much for um, attending, for asking so many amazing questions. I just really appreciate it. I'm sorry I had my back turned to y'all this whole time. It was just, I, it was, you just saw the back of my beautiful bonnet. So thank you, thank you. It's very old block letter AP. I will remove it and show it to y'all if y'all wanna look at it later. Um, but. Yeah, so uh, this is where you can find me. I have a coffee that is actually also my blog. Um, it acts like a tip jar as well, but I do blog on there. Um, and that's me in a very over-the-top pink house outfit because I kind of wore something more comfortable today. Um, so yeah, I wore an apron sideways. There's a OP that's been buttoned up over a meta skirt. That's meta. And it's old meta. So that was when they were definitely doing their pink house thing. Um, even though they're kind of going back to that now. Um, and street organ shoes, we talked a little bit about street organ. But yeah, so yeah. Um, if there's no other last minute questions, I guess I'll wrap it up and feel free. I didn't see a lot of people walk up here to touch my stuff. Go ahead and touch my stuff before I pack it all up. So I'll, I'll let y'all have like some time to touch things and ask me questions. You can ask me questions in this corner too if you were like too shy to um, talk now. So yeah, thanks everyone. <laughs>